DBD is, and you can see it here in this image maybe, um, it is the world's second largest refugee settlement. We are in northern Uganda. We are also uh, very near the border of South Sudan. So all the refugees really come from South Sudan into Uganda, and most of them settle here. We have 270,000 refugees living mm -hmm. here, so it's actually quite a large area. Um, it's not, you know, when I started this project, and when people ask me, oh, are you going to work in a refugee settlement? I always had in mind uh, rows of white UN tents, right? Quite close to each other. It's very different here. Here, the refugees build their own houses. They build their own huts in a very traditional local way with mud walls and straw kind of roofs and, and a bit of sticks of wood. Um, and it's quite organically grown. And if you look at the... Um, how it actually is placed. Everybody has their own little plot of land and next to, next to, next to, and the road is not really a road network. People just kind of meander through this field of houses and goes on and on for miles and miles. Um, we're working on this project with a um, foundation and they are, they kind of like to get their hands dirty, right? They went to uh, Bidi Bidi and actually asked the local community what they wanted, right? There's already um, NGOs working there around uh, uh, providing water, providing food, medicine, education. And one of the things that was missing really was culture. And therefore, um, the proposal is to build a center for music and arts. Right. Um, maybe the best way to kind of explain the project is on the model. Mm -hmm. Right? Sure. Should we do that? So the let me just lift up the roof. So what we have is elliptical um, shaped building. There's a few reasons for that. One of the reasons is because we wanted to make sure that people could still meander around the building and also through the building. So I have a big entrance here and entrance all the way on, on the back as well. So people could easily walk around it, walk through it, and didn't actually block any, anything that much of the, of the local environment. Um, this has a few parts. We have on one side here, we have the, uh, the performance area with a big auditorium. And to make sure that we get as many people as possible in, we're able to open up the doors in the back. Now the doors open up, open up completely in the back where People can just, you know, hundreds more people would actually be able to kind of join in. On this side here, we have um, a music room for music ed education. On this side, we have a recording studio. And then if we look at the roof itself, the roof is a big funnel. And the reason for that is that we wanted to catch as much water as we can. Because on the site, we noticed that there was a borehole where lots of women come and collect the water. The problem is, there's no sanitation, there's no electricity, there's no running water. So the, the bore was really contaminated. So we thought, we're building a, build, a big building already. Let's actually make sure that it does something extra. And the extra bit is that it's going to collect lots and lots of rainwater. And instead of just having a downpipe <laughs> on the side of the building, we thought, let's celebrate this. Let's celebrate this water collection and make everybody aware that we're doing that. And for that reason, we just put this little roof back. We wanted to make sure that it's visible where the water gets collected. So as there's an ellipse, there's two centers. One is for the performance and the other center is for collecting the water. Now, how does that water get collected? Um, in the beginning, we we're going to collect it underneath here, but that was kind of problems with the foundations and all that. So, and then we needed pumps. So we thought to kind of make it really easy and make it really simple. And we have a big water tank just down the hill. And then a little bit more down the hill, but in the main road, we have a tap where the local community can go and collect the water. Yeah. Although the roof is quite a complex um, geometry, the way we've dealt with it, we actually optimized it that there's not a single curved piece in this whole roof. There's not a single curved piece of metal at all. So everything, straight pieces, 
using local techniques so we can actually build this kind of rather special looking building in a completely uh, standard way right it's something you know I've spent 15 years of my, my career at Foster's where one of the things I did was rationalizing and actually opt to, uh, rationalizing uh, fabrication strategies for complex buildings you know, anything like the Beijing Airport or Smithsonian you know, that was my kind of my, my bread and butter for years uh, but I'm actually really happy that I kind of use that technique now to be able to build a very special building in a place like this it's quite a warm climate of course um, there's a few reasons also why we have this big roof so the big roof is going to shade quite a lot but at the same time it's not an insulated roof it's not insulated so it will get hot but we do know there's a lot of wind coming in from the uh, south so we know that we actually will be able to kind of cool down the building uh, when needed we did have an issue we thought well hang on it will rain the roof is not insulated this is going to be like a drum right if there's a performance happening if there's, a, if there's a classroom happening what do we do um, and we actually did speak to the local community to, to the local organization that we work with they called Sina Locata. they will be operating the building and they said like ah well they would just wait 20 minutes <laughs> right? there's a complete cultural different way of, of, of thinking about this we were like oh we're insulated and this and that and that and they're like oh no it rains only like 20 minutes at a time or 15 minutes it's fine and we're like, okay, we don't need to insulate the roof. It's absolutely okay. And we want to make this building as sustainable as possible, right? Um, so we thought, let's make as much as we can locally, like really local in BDBD. So we looked at the brickwork. Now, the brickwork that we have is uh, we're non fired bricks. And I kind of I want to kind of show you the back of here. Let me just put this aside a little bit. These are the bricks. They're made locally. We need about 50,000 of these. Um, one of the things we could have done is working with fired bricks. There's an issue with this, right? Um, because there's massive deforestation happening in the, in the refugee settlement. There's a lot of social tensions in between the local community and the refugees around kind of, you know, uh, going and get wood um, it's also unsafe sometimes for the women that go and get the wood so we thought let's let's try not to use wood right for this one um, so we're not going to use wood we don't but we won't be able to fire the bricks so what we did instead we're actually using this machine right here and this is a brick press I'm going to try to kind of open it um, there we go it's a bit heavy but what happens is that we have this one we can put a certain amount of local soil in here we do a mixture of soil and lime and cement and then once that is done I'm not going to do it right now I actually pull that lever and press the brick once that is done it gets dried in the sun for I think a couple of weeks and then it's actually ready to be used I've got a few bricks here that we made locally now, Fortunately, these are not made from Ugandan soil. These are just British clay that we used. <laughs> and we used these for the exhibition we've done in the London Design Biennale, which you kind of see right here, where we made a little mock-up showing the exhibitors, the people who came to the exhibition, how it was actually made. What we also did is we had a mock-up of the roof, of this roof structure. Now, that mock-up here was made in London but is an exact copy of the mock-up that we did in Kampala this is with our local um, architect uh, called local works and they've been absolutely amazing to work with and um, they love to build prototypes in the design process mm. I think they're a little bit the, I think they want to be the, the studio Mumbai of Uganda <laughs> really and uh, but it's absolutely fantastic because we were able to kind of work at all the details and decide everything before they went on site they are now also the contractor for the project which is it's a dream mm. <laughs> to work like that if you with your local architect who becomes a contractor and um, it's a quite a complicated project for them because it is nine hours drive away from Kampala where they are based um, but so far so good um, it's been actually going really smooth mm -hmm.